Hi, this is Rabbi Laser Weiss. Although my channel is mainly focused on exploring religion and how human beings are expected to live rational lives according to religious ideals and ideas, I do want to take a few moments to show you how, unfortunately, in our world, the way to live as a rational being that is examining situations and just looking at everything from every angle and trying to come to proper conclusions has fallen by the wayside. People today are largely um, giving more power to the emotional side of arguments, which really comes from more of the animal nature. And they're, they're reacting as opposed to carefully examining. Um, I remember years ago <clears throat> when I was learning a difficult concept uh, one of my teachers said that when you really want to think through things, you have to recognize that situations that are complicated are like a Rubik's Cube. Um, yes, it's true. It's not a good example because you could solve a Rubik's Cube blindfolded if you know the pattern correctly. But the point is that if you were just approaching a Rubik's Cube as somebody who didn't know anything about it, the most rational approach, most logical approach would be to look at one side and then as you manipulate it, check what's happening on the other sides. You have to be able to see the argument from different sides in order to appreciate what's happening. With that having been said, I'm going to take an example from current events. Right? This is not timeless because it's, it's what's happening now. It's just an idea, an example of examining something rationally. And I don't care what political side you're on, this is relevant to you. There was a woman who came forward, Tara Reid. She expressed that something happened between her and um, Joe Biden, who was running for president, that was inappropriate. Very similar to a different woman, Christine Blasey Ford, who came forward and accused Kavanaugh. Now everybody talks about how there's so many similarities, and is it hypocrisy, and is it not? Is the situation the same or different? Let's leave that aside for a moment. I want to focus on one specific thing. In his own interview, where he was talking about how he should be believed in defending himself, Joe Biden brought up a point that has been hammered on again and again and again in the media and in many publications, which is, why now? Why would Tara Reid wait till now? And if you'll say, well, now is because Joe Biden is running for president, well, vice president's pretty important, right? Vice president is honestly one of the most important people in the world. Hey, he's not the most important, but he's one of the most important people in the world. Why wouldn't she come forward then? And every time I heard this, there was something about it that bothered me until I sat there and I said, you know what, I really need to think about and examine this situation. What is it that's bothering me that I feel is irrational about this contention? And I, I, I think I have it. And therefore, I want to share it with you just as a way to show you that we need to examine things from different angles. If I'm arguing with you and you're arguing with me and I say, look, according to my perspective, according to the way I view the universe, this is true. And you say, well, according to the way I view the universe, no, it's not. Well, unless we can come to grips with each of our different perspectives, the argument doesn't, is, is, is a secondary point, right? If in my mind, on Tuesdays, it's always sunny, always, and you say, today's Tuesday and it's cloudy, I say, no, 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 if it's Tuesday, it's sunny. Until you manage to break me away from that idea, until you manage to break me out of that ridiculous mold, that if it's Tuesday, it's always sunny, I will not be able to actually have a rational argument with you. We're arguing at each other, not with each other, because I'm living, I have a separate set of realities and rules that I'm living according to. They have nothing to do with yours. In that vein, this is not exactly the same thing. That's just an illustration. Okay? It's just an exaggerated analogy. Let's look at Tara Reid's reality. Let's for a second say, what if she was telling the truth? If she's not telling the truth, if she is lying, why now is an incredibly great question. If Tara Reid is lying, then the question of why now is impossible to ignore. Very powerful question. She's a uh, why now? Obviously, she's a liar. But let's just uh, say for a second she is telling the truth. Let's go into that world. Let's look at the world through the lens of Tara Reid is a person. Why would she have waited if she was telling the truth? And does it make sense according to the reality that we live in, according to her reality, that she waited until now? Let's, let's, let's think about it for a second. When I was growing up, there was a, a cliched trope that was used in TV shows, something that I remember real politicians in the real world happening, uh, something that happened to them, and, and therefore it spread into culture as well. The idea that when a woman came forward and accused a powerful man of impropriety, she was generally vilified. And 
almost always these stories followed a certain trajectory of the politician denying it, and then people knowing about it. Sometimes there was evidence, sometimes not. And eventually, eventually, the politician might have been forced to say, yes, something happened, maybe a little, and then apologize, and then etc. and then blah, blah. Usually, somewhere along those, the, 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 the story, the woman would be villainized. And people would say, why would she be doing this? Right? Why now? It didn't matter when it was, by the way. It could have been the next day. People would say, well, why is she coming forward? It's obviously to embarrass him. Uh, people would say things like, well, he's a married man. Why was she, uh, you know, having a relationship with a married man? She must be a ahem, human being. And then they would use that as a catch-22. I don't believe her because if she's telling the truth, then she's a disgusting human being, so she's probably a liar. Because either she's lying and she's a disgusting human being, or she's telling the truth, which would make her a disgusting human being, who I would suspect of lying anyway. Right? And, so, and then if, if in the end it was all came out, it was all true, what was the trope? What was the cliche? Wow. What a disgusting human being. Home wrecker. Uh, sh- sh- it was her fault. Okay? Temptress. All these things would be said about people like that to the extent that it would, it would ruin their lives. And there were situations like this that happened in real life. Like I said, you go back into the 90s when I was growing up in the 80s, you will see this as a trope in TV shows. Right? The woman, the, the cheap woman who ruined the, the sheriff or the senator or the governor's life with her disgusting ways. Right? And these women were, were, were thrown out of town, they were ridiculed, they were mocked, they were made to feel terrible. Let's imagine that Tara Reid was, in fact, a woman who something happened to in the 80s. Now, she goes through this situation, and what happens is that something happens between her and Joe Biden. She's young, she lives in an environment where powerful men do things to women and get away with them. That's the norm. She vaguely is aware that when these types of things happen, it usually does not end well for the woman. <clears throat> I don't think you could have been a woman in the time that Tara Reid claims that this happened to her and not have known these ideas. That if you're going to come forward, you're going to be villainized. You're going to be made fun of. You're going to be mocked. And even if in the end it comes out that it was true, people will say that it was your fault, that you initiated it, that you, you dressed this up, you were asking for it, you provoked it. And in the end, the, the man who was powerful would end up being uh, put on a pedestal. And if he suffered damage, it would be nothing compared to the damage that you suffered. Right? In addition, Tara Reid actually could have, I mean, just, just to judge her favorably, it is possible that she even thought that maybe that really did happen. She might have thought like, oh, maybe I acted inappropriately. Maybe I, right? And we know that she didn't accuse him at, at first in those times of like an, an assault. And I think that the reason for that was also because in her mind, she might have also believed these ideas that were so prevalent in society. Maybe it's my fault. Maybe I did something wrong. Maybe I partially caused this. Maybe he's not so bad. Maybe he didn't mean to be bad. That's just what he perceived as something that was happening in reality. And therefore, that was the way he acted was based on his perception of reality. And therefore, I wasn't assault. Like, people didn't know. And as the years go by, she can't come forward because she sees what happens in the world to women who come forward and accuse powerful men. And time goes by, and it just becomes harder and harder. And again, these things happen over and over and over and again and again. The women are villainized. They are made to suffer for coming forward and having the bravery to speak out about these issues. That's really what happens in the world. And all of a sudden, a few years ago, something changes. Did it change when Joe Biden was running for vice president? No, it did not. Did it change when Joe Biden was running for vice president the second time? No, it did not. However, all of a sudden, after Joe Biden is out of office, something happens. And that something is the explosion of what is called the Me Too movement. The Me Too movement was, in fact, an outgrowth of women who said, enough. We are not going to be held down anymore by the fact that women are so usually villainized 
when they speak, when they come forward to speak against powerful men. That is a reality. The whole Me Too movement was about acknowledging that reality and overcoming it and changing it. And so these women started an organization. Even then, I think many women didn't believe in it. They might have thought it was a one-time thing. They might have thought that it was something that it, it happened, it worked out well for those women in this case with that person. But surely this wasn't going to be an ongoing reality. And then Christine Blasey Ford happened. And that changed everything. Because Christine Blasey Ford, it wasn't just that she was a woman accusing a man. It was that Christine Blasey Ford, and this is important, I don't care whether or not you believe her or not, again, we're just examining the situation rationally. Christine Blasey Ford had no witnesses, had no corroborating evidence. It was just her and her emotionally compelling story versus these powerful men. And who got behind her? Powerful politicians. Joe Biden himself. The culture, the media, they all stood behind her and said, yes, you are coming forward to talk in the face of a powerful man. And normally, in our reality, in our world, you would be villainized. You would be vilified. You would be put down. You would be harangued. You would be made to suffer. But you know what, Christine Blasey Ford? We are with you. We support you. We're behind you. We are going to change the game. We're going to change the nature of what happens when a woman steps forward. We are going to empower her. We're going to stand behind her. Nancy Pelosi, Kamala Harris, all of these powerful, powerful people. Can you imagine what was going on in Tara Reid's mind? Again, this is on the side. This is in the world that she would have been telling the truth, that she is telling the truth. Can you imagine what was happening in the mind of Tara Reid? She's looking at this and she's seeing what's happening and she says, oh my God, I could come forward. Look at what's going on. I have corroboration, which, which is more, I'm willing to testify in growth. And I say, oh, well, Christine Blasey Ford, okay, whatever she had, Tara Reid wasn't making that insane calculation, up, right? She's not doing that in, in the world where she's telling the truth. She's reacting emotionally to what she's seeing. And she's saying, all of these people, this woman came forward and instead of her life being ruined and destroyed, which would be what you would expect, instead they're behind her. Instead they're for her. They're pushing her forward. Maybe that would be what would happen for me, says Tara Reid. Maybe that could be me. Maybe I could come forward and, sh and tell the world. But what's the point? What's the point now? It's 27 years later or whatever, 30-something, I don't remember exact numbers. Joe Biden is not an important person in the world right now. So what? Why bother? Let old hurts be old hurts. And then Joe Biden starts running for president. And Tara Reid is looking at a new reality that did not exist a few years ago. And she says, wait a minute. Joe Biden, who hurt me, thinks he's going to run and for such a powerful thing? You know what? I'm going to go to these organizations that empower women, the new Me Too era, and I'm going to tell them I have something to say. And so she goes to them and they say, actually, no, we're sorry, but we can't get behind you. Whatever their reasons are, I don't care if they're innocent or, or hypocrites, who cares? The point is that she tried even before Joe Biden was the presumptive nominee. And now it gets to the point where Joe Biden is the presumptive nominee and no one's listening to Tara Reid. And Tara Reid thinks it's just a fluke. Of course, once my story's out there, all of these people who are powerfully behind women, who want to help women, who want to change the way women are viewed when they come forward to speak against powerful women, all of them, and all the men too, who, are, who, who spoke so powerfully in support of women, all of those people, when they hear my story, they're going to come and support me the way that Christine Blasey Ford was supported which is why I can come forward. I couldn't come forward before because I knew that if I came forward five, ten years ago, I would be villainized. I would be destroyed. But now the world is different. Those people are going to get behind me, says Tara Reid in her heart. And so she doesn't give up. She says, despite the fact that these organizations, for whatever reason that I don't understand, are not helping me, 
I am going to keep pushing forward until my story gets out there, and then everyone will get behind me just like they got behind all the other women in the Me Too movement in this new reality where a woman will not be villainized, will not be harangued, will not be chased away and made to suffer, will instead be promoted, will instead be given respect and dignity. And so finally, she breaks through that barrier and she is heard. And I want you to realize how, how crazy it is what, what we did in response. Now, I'm not saying what the response would have, could have, or should have been. Let's forget about that. Again, I just want us to use our brain. Are we thinking rationally? Rationally. We are looking into the eyes of all the tarot reads of the world. And by that, I mean every woman who... And believe me, I bet there were a lot of such people. Thank God I've never been involved in such an incident. Ever. Or even something that someone could have ever interpreted as such a thing. But you better believe that there are many women out there who have been abused by people in power. Many of them, and many of them, like Tara Reid, probably saw what happened with Christine Blasey Ford and their hearts surged with an emotion knowing that reality could be different now, and maybe it would be for them as well. And then Tara Reid steps forward, and the same politicians who gave them such hope, the same politicians who said to all the young women of a generation, your reality is going to be different. You're not going to be destroyed if you come forward and tell us what happened to you. You're not going to be put down and shamed if you tell us what happened to you. You're not going to be uh, victim blamed. Instead, we're going to stand behind you and support you. And then Tara Reid steps forward, and you look in those exact same people's eyes, and you say, Nope! If you step forward, we are going to ask the same questions that we asked 10 years ago. We're going to say, Why now? Why now? Why now? Because the Me Too movement exists. Why now? Because 10 years ago, I believed that if I stepped forward, I would be destroyed. But now I believe that if I step forward, I'm going to be supported. No. No, why now? Why now? You must be a liar. You must be a bad person. You must be a weaponized political pawn. What? I thought you weren't going to do this. I thought the world changed. Can you imagine what a woman sitting, sitting somewhere in a, in, a, in a room behind it, watching a television screen, who watched Christine Blasey Ford and was herself once assaulted in such a similar way, and she must have been thinking how wonderful it is. Can you imagine the person who in two years from now, God forbid, will be assaulted? And they're going to think, will my reality be Christine Blasey Ford's or Tara Reid's? And what's worse, do I want to take the chance? Do I want to roll those dice? Because I guarantee you, Tara Reid, if she's telling the truth, in that reality where she's telling the truth, she did not want to roll those dice. And she made that clear, in fact, in her interviews. She came forward because of the promise of Me Too. She came forward. You want to know why now? What kind of an insane question? Why now? Why now? Because you promised me you wouldn't do this to me. Why now? And if she had known that there was like a 50-50 chance that she would be <coughs> Tara Reeded or Christine Blasey Forded, I don't think she would have come forward. I think she would have been the same meek person when Joe Biden was running for vice president, when there was no Me Too movement, when there was no promise to Tara Reid that if she would come forward, she would be put on a pedestal. That people would say, we believe you, Tara. We respect women and believe women. And the world has changed. But she came forward because she didn't know she would be treated like Tara Reid. She thought she would be treated like Christine Blasey Ford. I've been going on. This is honestly a rant. I hope you haven't been watching this whole... Uh, this feels kind of boring at this point. I like to beat points to death because I, I strive for and need clarity. And I want to just make sure that this was clear. How, how insane this is. The, the insanity of asking, why now? In the reality that she's telling the truth. Again, if she's a liar, it's a devastating question. But... You, if you ask the question, it means you've already determined that she is a liar, and therefore the question is powerful, and therefore it doesn't matter that it might not be a powerful question if she's telling the truth, because we already decided she's a liar. Why? Because you can't ask the question if she's telling the truth. If she's telling the truth, we, we know why. The idea of standing up there as a rational human being being like, why would you come forward now? 
What changed between now and what? What, are you insane? You don't know what changed between now and what? The answer is, you're a liar, Tara, and therefore, if you were telling the truth, you would have come forward. Okay, but what if I am telling the truth? Well, you're not, so we can accuse you with this. It's insane. It's so irrational. Again, I never, like, I'm, I'm not taking sides. I, I want to make it clear. I never took sides. That wasn't my goal in this video. My point is how people are not thinking rationally. And in case you'll say, well, maybe that's not a major defense. Again, this was the defense that Joe Biden and many of his media allies and many politicians put forth. The primary question that Joe Biden responded with when he was asked this question in an interview was, why would she come forward now? And the answer is so rational. It's, oh, I can't. It's so insane to see people just turn off their intellect and, and try and believe what they want. All right. That's my political rant for today.